Thank you so much. Honorable Member CNK Premier. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, sir. Sir, I rise to oppose the demands for grants of civil aviation proposed by our learned friend, Sri Jodhirajit Sindhyaji, the Honorable Minister for Civil Aviation, for the financial year 2022-23. As the budget proposals for 2022-23 are totally for the privatization of the civil aviation sector. Sir, indiscriminate rampant privatization is taking place in the entire civil aviation sector, namely airlines, mm -hmm. airports, cargo maintenance, repair and overall yeah. services, MRO, and That's general good. aviation, aerospace That's manufacturing, good. skill development. In all yeah. sectors, the privatization, rampant yeah. and indiscriminate privatization is taking place in almost all the areas of civil aviation. Therefore, I strongly oppose the policy of privatization and hence oppose the demands for grants for the civil aviation proposed by the Honorable Minister. So the National Civil Aviation Policy, that is NC, NCAP of 2016, that too mainly aims at rampant privatization and further, 100% FDA is also permitted in scheduled air transport service. So the entire scenario of the civil aviation sector now open to the private sector and even to the FDI is being allowed in such a situation the role of the ministry of an independent ministry of such kind itself is in question. That is the first point which I would like to make. Sir, the only point which I would like to focus is on regarding the Air India. That is the sellout of Air India. The privatization of the sellout of Air India is very, very interesting if you examine. So the share purchase agreement was signed with Tireless Private Limited, that is Tata Company Limited, on 25th of October 2021. The bid was won by rupees 18,000 crores as enterprises value EV. So the, why the prestigious national carrier of the country is sold out for cheaper price? So the privatization of Air India was a deliberate, systematic, scientific activity done in a phased manner with ulterior motive with malafide intention. It was killing of Air India because Air India was running in profit and it was running in a good way, but systematic and scientific uh, killing of Air India was done and finally it was forced to sell the Air India such a prestigious national carrier of our country. Now a country like India, the democratic country like India which do not have a national carrier means it is shameful as far as the nation is concerned. Sir, how the Air India is being killed, I, will, I would like to cite some examples. Sir, in violation of the bilateral agreements, traffic rights were given to foreign carriers, which was one major reason for the downfall of Air India. Domestic route schedules were withdrawn, were cancelled to pave way for the flights of pri pri private airlines. And interest on aircraft purchase loans were paid at the rate of 9%, whereas now the new company Tata got the same reduced to 4.5%. That means less than half, less than half, that is, it was 9% when it was Air India, now it has come down to 4.5%. Corrupt officials were protected and no steps were initiated to put an end to corruption in Air India. The majority of routes operating to Gulf countries were handed over to Air India Express. Air India Express being low-cost carrier, executive class passengers, and passengers preferring full-service carriers opted other airlines. Sir, government took no steps to control the mismanagement and corruption in Air India with the sole intention to sell the national carrier to private airlines. Sir, I would like to know from the Honorable Minister, what would be the future of the employees of Air India after one year? That is the question which we are all concerned. We know that Air India was forced to sell. Finally, it is sold. We are, though we are, in principle, we are opposing it. We would like to know what would be the fate of the employees of Air India. So the number one point is, post disinvestment, Tata will be required to retain the employees of Air India in service for just one year. It is submitted that the denial of job security to the employees of Air India post dis disinvestment is contrary to the service regulations and standing orders that are presently applicable to all the employees of Air India. As per the applicable services regulations and standing orders, they are entitled to continue in service until the age of 58 years, which is the age of superannuation. 
when airports were privatized airport authority of india airport authority of india there was an option they can go to the other airports which comes under the airport authority of india but as far as the air india employees are concerned they have no other option so i would like to know from the honorable minister when such an option was there for airport authority of india employees to have an option to air other airports why you are not giving any chance of deployment to any other public sector undertakings by which their job job, job is job, job security can be protected and the second point is as per the guidelines of the department of public enterprises central public sector companies are supposed to bring out a voluntary retirement scheme prior to handing over the company to the new employer why in the case of air india is this not done no vrs scheme has been announced before handing over this company to a private airlines and the third point is the employees and retired officers i am concluding the employees and retired employees are providing medical facility as a condition of service will tata continue to provide the medical facilities to the employees and the retired employees this has to be made assured since it is quite unfortunate that nothing is being done so far so i am seeking the clarification sir i would like to cite one example you may be well aware regarding an honest officer an honest employee of air india i am not mentioning his name that is he has been he has, he has a whistle bowler he has been harassed like anything by the air india employees of the trivandrum airport and finally he finally against the air india employee officers the crime has, case has been registered by the police that is the general manager personal officiating southern region and the manager trivandrum are the seventh and the ninth accused respectively what is the crime in this crime case registered for forging and foisting false complaint of sexual harassment against yes. an honest office and honest employee of air india in trivandrum justice should be provided to him and the last point sir which i would like to make is the regarding the budget proposals sir if you see the budget proposals indian aviation sector is the third biggest domestic aviation market worldwide and ninth largest international aviation market but if you see the budget estimate for 22 to 23 85% less than that of the revised estimate of 21 22 the capital expenditure is just 76 crores of rupees while revenue is just 10050 591 rupees so the Budget estimate of 22-23 shows that an independent ministry for civil aviation is not required because the entire rights or the entire functions have already been transferred to the private sector. And the last point, sir, regarding the user fees. See, the Cochin International Airport Limited is a joint venture by the cooperative sector, joint venture, joint venture company. In Cochin International Airport, you see, it is running in a profit and they are giving dividend to the shareholders. There is no use surface but as far as the private airports delhi mumbai hyderabad bangalore are concerned huge user fee is being imposed as far as the passengers is concerned so kindly have some control regulatory mechanism so as to regulate and monitor the user fee which is being imposed upon the poor passengers with these words once again i would like to say that i want, I, I would like to oppose the privatization policy and with these words i conclude thank you very much sir honorable member shivadi navinidharana